What's up everybody? Chris with South Carolina Gun School and today we're going to be talking about the Springfield Hellcat and the Canic TP9SC Elite and kind of seeing how they match up. everybody uh, like I said we're gonna be talking about the uh, Canic TP9 SC Elite or Elite SC however you want to say it and the Springfield Hellcat uh, as we all know uh, Springfield released the Hellcat in competition with the SIG P365 and I wanted to kind of do this video because I've seen a lot of videos comparing the uh, Hellcat to the P365 so I didn't see any reason on uh, beating that dead horse. I did want to compare it to the Canic TP9 SC Elite. Um, that's Canic's kind of subcompact, something to kind of compete uh, with the Hellcat and the P365. I know there's some people out there that are calling the Hellcat and the P365 a micro compact from what I'm hearing. Uh, there's all kind of different things with these guns. 
Um, gun's a gun. I will say I'm a little jealous with the P365 and the, the Hellcat because, you know, when I first started carrying, it was your, your Glock 19, your Glock 23. Some a little bit larger guns, or I should say larger frame guns to get a good high round count. So now you've got the P365, you've got the Hellcat. Um, then of course you've got like the Glock 26, but I know it's a little bit bigger uh, than what the Hellcat is. Everybody's looking for compact and capacity. So I think Springfield did a very good job with this. Uh, the reason I went with the Springfield is, is my next everyday carry uh, was really the way uh, the grip felt in my hand compared to the P365. I'm not saying the P365 is, is not a good gun, but even with the P365 XL, the Hellcat still just felt a little bit better in my hands. And I mean, there's not like there's a big, huge difference. You're getting one extra from the P365 to the Hellcat. It's what, 10 and 12 with the P365, the Hellcat you're getting 11 and 13. But now with the Canic, the Canic you're getting 12 and 15. But I mean, I can kind of hold these up and you can already see there's a little bit of size difference here. Uh, so if I put the, I'll tell you what, as you can see, they're both locked back. Everything's empty, no mags in the gun. We're gonna close these up, kind of stick them side by side here. So you can see the Canic is definitely, um, I'd say maybe a half, inch longer, maybe a little bit more than what the uh, Hellcat is. And you can even see the trigger guards a little bit larger and the grip. I mean, there's, I don't know if you can really see because I can't really evenly hold. You can see the grip is a little bit longer as well. I mean, we're talking just a few inches here I'll hold them up this way so you can kind of see width-wise. So, I mean, there's definitely some size differences. I know some of y'all are probably like, well, you know, let's do this here. I don't know if you can see from the back there. So there, there are some size differences here. Um, I might can put the Canic up next to like a a Glock 26 and everybody will be comparing it to the Hellcat. I'm sure some of my little keyboard warriors out there will be all over me about that one. But the reason I wanted to compare it to the Canic is, is this is, Canic is something I think that's really making a, a big push here um, in the U.S. Uh, I think they're very, very good guns. Uh, I'll be honest, I wasn't, uh, I'd never heard of Canic until last year. Uh, a friend of mine came in with the Canic TP9 SFX and took a class and was very nice enough to let me hold on to it for a couple weeks and play around with it. And let me tell you, I was thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly impressed um, with how well it did. I've been thoroughly impressed with the TP9 Elite SC, SC Elite, however you want to see it, see it, uh, however you want to say it. Uh, I've been very, very impressed with it. Uh, it feels really good in my hands. Uh, the uh, SFX felt really good in my hands. Uh, I'll be honest, I haven't done the uh, Elite or the was it SFA. I haven't really felt any of those to see. But I'm pretty sure they're along the same lines as what the other Canics are. But this has just felt really, really good. Um, I'm not 100% sure exactly what the trigger pressure is. I know it's a lot lighter than what the Hellcat is, uh, but still, again, the Hellcat is, you know, a very, very good gun. As you can see by the triggers, both of them have the trigger safeties. Uh, there's serrations on the front and rear of the slide. The um, rear sights are very well raised, kind of squared off to go with your, if you're doing some single-handed work, you need to go off your belt or your holster. Uh, that's, uh, again, you get a little bit more round capacity, but it is a little bit uh, larger of a gun than what the Hellcat is. I will say the Hellcat, I can put in the 13 round mag, drop it down in my pocket even without a holster, and 
uh, you can't even really tell I've got a gun in my pocket. Where with this one, you kind of get a little bit better idea of what I'm carrying in my pocket without a holster. And, you know, I don't, even with a holster, it's are probably going to bulge a little bit more with the Hellcat wood, but I don't think you'd be able to tell uh, as much within a holster than without a holster. I just wanted to drop it down in my pocket just to uh, kind of get an idea. Uh, the big differences between this and this outside of the round capacity is price point. And this one is the Canic is coming already cut uh, for an optic. And this, the Hellcat, I shouldn't say this, I've got two of them up here. The Hellcat, uh, the one I got is not cut for the optic. Um, I'm not a big fan of optics on carry guns. I know that's something that's really, really growing in popularity. And I'm not gonna sit here and say I'm, I'm against having an optic on a carry gun. I'm just not a big fan of it. And I will say if you're gonna go with an optic, get it and go out and practice with it because uh, carrying with an optic on your everyday carry, the draw and to me the aiming is a little different. Uh, I'm not, I didn't feel I was drawing or in presenting kind of the same way as if I'm just running iron sights, even talking to some people that run optics, um, not only on their everyday carry, but on their handguns in general. Both all have said there, there's a little bit of a learning curve there because your, your aiming and your draw stroke is going to be a little bit different. But if you get out and practice, it's not that big of a deal. Price point. This I've seen in between, the cheapest I've seen it is $350 up to about $400. And again, this is cut with an optic and I'm going to open it up and let you see um, what all you'll be getting in the case well, when you purchase it here shortly. Uh, this price point wise without the optic I've seen as cheap as like 460, 465 up to 500 and with it cut for the optic price point I've seen between probably 5, 550 ish somewhere in there depending on you know what you go with and where you go but Just because this is 350, I think quality is about the same. So don't think because you're paying less for this, you're not getting a good quality gun. Trust me, you're getting a good quality gun for the money. Yes, I know this is a little bit more, but it's a still a very, very good gun. And then you've got some of the people that are a little bit upset with Springfield and everything that's kind of happened with some of the... Um, gun laws and bills that have been going through um, Illinois and everything. I'm not going to sit here and get into all that. And truthfully, I really didn't find out about all that stuff until after I had gotten the Springfield Hellcat. And I will say I, I was able to get it at a very good price point. We're not going to sit here and get into that. Uh, but huge thank you to 12 Mile Defense for helping me out with that because at the time it had just been released in was very, very hard to find. I had the fortune of luck of being able to put one in my hands uh, because I found it um, at a pawn shop of all places. And their price point, I think, was a little high, but the guy that purchased it didn't like it, so I brought it in and pawned it, which I'm sure he probably maybe lost a little bit, but here and there, I, I didn't buy the one at the pawn shop. I bought it at 12 Mile Defense. But, very, very good guns. I wanted to, to let everybody see what's out there as far as what comes in the box. So with, I'm gonna slide the Hellcat off to the side here. So with the can, what you're getting in the box is of course you've got, um, flip it up, you've got your cleaning stuff in there. And then you're getting a, Decent Kydex holster. I was trying to think. I'm not going to sit here and say it's a bad Kydex holster, but to spend the money and get a Kydex holster with your gun, 
I think this is a, a really, really good thing. This will, you can actually swap this from inside the waistband to outside the waistband. So you've got an option to go in or outside the waistband, which I really think is a, a pretty cool little thing. Now there are other holster companies out there, but to get, to get a holster with the gun where you can go inside or outside, I think is pretty cool. Is it the best holster in the world? No, I don't think it's the best holster in the world. I think there's some improvements that can be made because you've got your Kydex all the way out here. I would like to see this Kydex and then this on the outside, um, more of a leather material to kind of, so it can flex a little bit more than the Kydex and fit to your body because certain spots on my hip, I wasn't, it wasn't as comfortable as if I could have had something with a little bit more play. Um, kind of poked me a little bit but again not a bad holster to come with the gun and then of course you have your 12 round magazine and your 15 round magazine and then the 12 round magazine it also comes with a flush plate so you can run the mag flush with the gun here if you don't want the pink extension. Me personally, I like the pink extension. Um, as you can see, with the pink extension, I get a better grip on the gun. It feels a lot more comfortable than with the flush plate. The flush plate, I'm kind of, my pinky's kind of hanging off the bottom a little bit here. So I do like the pinky extension on the 12 round magazine. Now with the 15 round, it does extend it out a little bit more. Uh, I will say the only complaint I have is if you can see, got this big gap right here and it doesn't really fill in. So it, it, to me, it feels a little awkward back here at the back. I don't know if there's a way you could, they can change. I'm sure there's modifications that can be made, but that's what it looks like holding it. I've got a, I like the 15 round a lot. I get a lot better grip on it than, you know, even with the pinky extension. Again, the pinky extension gives me a good grip, but I get a better grip with the 15 round. Then you are also getting your tools and stuff to be able to, and oh, I'm sorry, you're getting your back straps. You need to extend it or lower it down. So you've got. Sorry. Oop. And then of course you got your tools and your screws for the plates and everything else with the optics. So $350, $400 and you're getting all this plus you've got your little safety lock and everything. So I mean $350, well $350, $400 depending on where you go. Average price point I, from what I've been seeing has been about $375. Uh, to 380 which is to me is still a, a very good price point for this gun it, it, I really like this gun you know it, I could see me adding this uh, to the uh, collection again the trigger is very very just I mean it's just so so liked I need to get one of those trigger pressure gauge things I mean, it just, and the reset, look at that reset. That reset is sick, but still just really, really light trigger on this thing. Really light trigger, I really, really like it. So I mean, your holster, your 15 round, tools for the optics and the back strap, 12 round mag with the pink extension or flush plate, you get your cleaning stuff, all at, okay, so that's what, all at around $350, $400. I think it's a really, really great price point, really, really good gun. Now with the Hellcat, of course I don't have the box here, but this, this little pouch, I shouldn't say pouch, I mean, I guess it's a case, 
this little case actually comes with the Hellcat. And to me, I think they kind of did this to, uh, and if, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I'm sure somebody will correct me in the comments like always, but I think they kind of gave this so you still have a way to be able to carry because most guns, when they first come out, they're kind of hard to find a holster for them unless you get a gun like this that comes with the holster. But they're very hard to find the holster for. Um, so this is the little pouch uh, that comes, I keep saying pouch, this is a little case it comes with. Uh, you've got a little spot that you can put a patch on here. Um, as you can see, this is actually for, let me take one of the mags, you can actually fit the extra mag up in there. So you get that that fits right up in there. I guess a spot for, I don't know if you want to carry money and identification and stuff like that. And then you can just take the gun, put it in there like that. I opened it up too much, let me get the zipper. Zip it up and it just looks like a little case that you would carry, maybe a cell phone and wallet and stuff in, or you know, a small iPad could fit in here. And you know, you can just carry it right next to you. If somebody comes along, I'm gonna zip it real slow. Voila, there you go. So I think it's pretty cool that it came with this. Uh, I didn't bring it out here, uh, but you see you've got your 11 round with your pinky extension, this thing. With this gun, I have to have that pinky extension. If I don't have the pinky extension and just run the flush plate to where it runs flush, my pinky hangs all the way off where with the canic, it doesn't really hang all the way off, but still, I like the pinky extension on both guns. It gives me a better grip. And then that's the 11 round. Of course, I mainly run this with the 13 round because I get a full grip on the gun again just the way this flares as it comes down it's not much more than the 365 but it's enough to where it just felt so much better in my hands and i just i really really like it the trigger press is a little bit heavier than what the canic is and the reset so you see, I'm almost all the way, see, almost all the way back out the reset. Is a little bit further than what the Canik is. The, as you can see, there's what the rear sights look like. And then this, there's what the rear sights, or I shouldn't say rear sights, the sights look like in general. I like the little U shape this has, and then the tritium front sight is just crazy, crazy easy to pick up. It's almost like having an optic on the gun. I mean, especially at night. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Shooting them, I love shooting both of them. Both of them are really, really fun to shoot. This one is a little bit heavier. So to me, the there wasn't quite as much recoil as there was with uh, the Hellcat, uh, but it's easily maintained as long as you've got a good grip and a good stance and everything. But yeah, this was really, really cool to, to get the case. I kind of thought when I was buying it, he was throwing this in as a, as a bonus. And I was like, I don't really need that. And he was like, oh no, it comes with it. So, I mean, that's pretty cool. You know, it gives you an option to, to carry since you might not have a holster because that was one thing when this came out. You can easy find holsters now, pretty easy for it. Uh, I think the company I went with at the time was Veter, Vetter, I could be saying it wrong. Um, they were about the only ones I, at the time when I got it that I was able to find you know, a decent little holster. Now there's a lot of companies out there that are starting to put holsters together uh, for the Hellcat. Uh, can it comes with the holster, which is, I think, probably a good thing because the this uh, this model of the Canic is kind of hard to find 
a holster for right now. So it's got a holster to get you by, but not the best thing in the world. I and mean, depending on where you carry your body type, it might not be the most comfortable thing, but anytime you carry a handgun, you're looking for the, the comfortable, uncomfortable. There's never gonna be anything fully comfortable about carrying a handgun, but you want to be able to protect yourself. And if you're looking for something compact, then, you know, one of these or the P365 are a very, very good gun to go with. I think I was reading the other day where right now I think the P365 is probably the top selling gun on the market. And I can kind of agree with that. I will say I've seen a few more P365s showing up in uh, my pistol classes. I'm seeing a few more P365s showing up in my CWP classes. So. I could see that possibly being, you know, the case, and you know, it could be somebody that's uh, partial to Sig that wrote the article. You never know, uh, but they're all very, very good guns. I wanted. I haven't seen too many videos comparing these two. Some of y'all probably gonna say, "Well, there's no comparison. This is more than nipple." Whatever. Yes, it is a little bit smaller, but this is, I think, a very, very good competition to the Hellcat or the P365 or the 40, Glock 43, the Glock 26. We can see here and go on and on and on. But go out, take a look at them, see what you think. Don't look at this video and go, well, he's got one of these two guns. I need to go get one of these two guns. If you've got a place near you where you can go and rent the guns and shoot them before you buy them, please go. Or if you know somebody that's got one of these two guns, if you're local, let me know. I will let you come by and shoot one or both of these guns if you want to. Please, please. I'm getting sidetracked off of talking and focusing on these two guns, but the reason I'm saying this is go and shoot the guns to make sure it's what you're going to like. Because you could go and shoot both of these and not like either one of them. So just because I'm saying they're good guns doesn't mean you need to go out and buy it. You need to find what fits you. But these are really, really good guns if you're looking for concealment and something for an everyday carry. So if you've got a place near you, please go out, check it out, shoot it, see how it feels in your hands to make sure that it is going to work for you. But I can't tell you how many times people go out and buy a handgun, come into one of my classes, and after running two, three, four, five, six, seven hundred rounds through it, they're like, well, I don't really like this thing. Well, did you shoot it before you buy it? Well, no, not really. I watch such and such video. I appreciate everybody watching the videos uh, tremendously. I can't tell y'all how much I appreciate it, but please go and put the gun in your hand to see if it is something that you're gonna like. If you don't have anywhere or anybody that owns them where you can shoot it, at least go and put it in your hands. Don't just watch the video and then go buy the gun. Go put it in your hands, see if it's gonna feel comfortable to you and feel good in your hands. So now that I got sidetracked there, Springfield Hellcat, Canic TP9 SC Elite or Elite SC, depending on who you talk to. Very, very good guns. Very, very good for concealment. Very, very good for everyday carry. I'll have links down in the description below for both guns. I'm not gonna sit here and bore you with stats on the guns and things like that. You can go and read that for yourself, I'm sorry. I think that just gets a little bit boring at times when you start getting into all the statistics and stuff. But they still work very well. They break down about the same. Uh, the Canic is a little bit more like the Glock. You've got your left here and here. So you pull it back, push it down. It doesn't go all the way forward. So this doesn't slide all the way off. You have to come off and then kind of wiggle it back and then up. So it's not gonna go all the way forward like this with the Glock. You've got different sections here, slides right on just like that. And then you just, got, I'm sure there's a little trick back up, something like that. I just have to wiggle a little bit to get it off. But you see it doesn't slide all the way off like what the Glock or what the Springfield here is gonna do back on. And then with 
the Hellcat, of course, this is a little bit more like um, the, Lord, I just drew a blank, the m &P Shield, there we go. You've got this that you're gonna push down. So you just take and push it. I'm sorry, I'm going backwards with looking. Totally forgetting how to do it. You gotta push it up. So it goes reverse of what the m &P Shield does. God, I keep having a brain fart. So you see, you push up where the m &P Shield, you push down. And then of course, just release it. And this one slides all the way off just like what the Glock does. So, put it back, and then you'll push again, see I'll push down, so, up, down. So, very simple to break down. Again, very good guns. Go out, put them in your hands, shoot them, check them out. See if it's something that you're going to like. If not, try the 365. If not, there's plenty of other guns out there that you can try to find something to protect you for your everyday carry. I uh, hope everybody has enjoyed the video. Uh, I've enjoyed doing the video for y'all. I cannot tell y'all again how much I appreciate um, all the sharing, all the commenting and just interaction that we're having throughout the YouTube page is continuing to grow. We're getting more and more subscribers. I really like the direction that everything is going. You know, we're looking to hopefully start expanding in the near future. So for everybody that's supporting and subscribing and following and commenting and sharing, huge, huge, huge appreciation uh, to our sponsors, uh, Get Right Personal Training, UAG Custom Shop, Lau Welding. I cannot tell y'all how much I appreciate all y'all's help and support as well. It really, really means a lot. You know, when I first started this, I didn't, wasn't really sure how it was going to go, but things have, have really, really been going in a great direction. I uh, did a podcast with the Firearms Training Central, so that'll be coming out in a couple weeks for anybody that wants to go over to uh, their page and check it out. Uh, I'll have a link. Um, they're available on our YouTube page and stuff, or not, not YouTube page, on our Facebook page, um, Instagram, as well as our website, so everybody can go over there and check that out. But they're also doing really good things. Uh, they're helping me with a lot of stuff, so if you're a firearms instructor um, or in the firearms industry and wanting to kind of help get your name out there, highly recommend joining Firearms Training Central and working with them. Um, Isaac is doing really, really good things over there. Uh, it's been a pleasure working with him. So go over there and check them out. They've got some great podcasts um, that they've already been working on. So please go over and check them out. Check us out. And uh, hopefully I'll see everybody out on the range one day. And always remember, folks, if you're not shooting, you're reloading. If you're not reloading, you're fighting. If you're not fighting, you're dead. Train to live.